Hello everyone, this is a bonus video where I am going to take the concepts of the last video on the landscape tool and try to basically do the assignment. Uh, I'm going to find some reference images and try to use the tools in the landscape sculpt tool to try and recreate some of the, the characteristics of that landscape. So I already have my reference images. These are images from an area where I used to live. I'm going to focus mostly on this one and this one because I feel like this image has some really interesting contours that I might uh, that I want to recreate. And like um, this, this could be a fun little mini level in a game or or a walking tour or something with with this path and this river. And then uh, this and from this image, I really like these rocks. I'm not going to focus on the rocks right now because that will come in a later video. Um, but these sort of low rolling hills in the distance are also something that I want to um, try to capture in, 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 my, uh, in my explorations. So before I begin, I'm going to just uh, look at this image and try and capture the, the characteristics that I want to bring into, into my world. Um, specifically the idea of this kind of layered hillscape. So hills in the foreground and then hills in the middle ground and then um, some kind of in the background. Uh, and also the type of hill has this kind of sloping gradient. Um, oh, I have a new tool which I think will help with this. Yeah, there we go. Um, so this, this sloping gradient which kind of um, starts shallow and then goes steep and then ends shallow again and as well as kind of flat topped hills. So we've got this kind of S-shaped curve on, on these hills uh, with, with flat tops and then a lot of kind of bumpy detail on the hill itself. So I know that I'm going to be using that noise tool for that. Then there's also going to be a very shallow river running through, a very shallow river. Um, there we go. Uh, a kind of shallow river running through, which I assume is going to go back there through the hills. I'm not exactly trying to recreate this picture necessarily, just capture the essence of what this landscape is doing, and a couple of more valleys th throughout. Okay, now that I have a sense of what I'm going to do, I will hop over into Unreal and do my best to, to get this done. This is going to be very quick and very heavy-handed, so when you're creating your own, I encourage you to spend a lot more time and love and care that I'm going to put into this one, but I don't want to go too long with this video, so uh, I'm just going to do it real quick. All right, so here we are in Unreal. I've got my scale reference mannequin, uh, which is going to, you know, I'm, I'm imagining this person on this bridge, so, so I think I'll start with the bridge and the path, um, or where the bridge would be, and then maybe a little bit of a river. Uh, to, to build out the scene, and then I'll paint in the mountains, the hills, uh, after that. Right, so first things first, I'm going to use my landscape tool to make that river. So I'll go to the sculpt, and I'll set my brush size way down. Way down. Like a hundred, one meter. So looking at this river, yeah, that river is no more than one or two meters wide, maybe two, two meters. Uh, and I'm going to use shift to lower the terrain here. And it's going to be a little heavy handed that the river comes out, but that's okay. Cause I can always come in and smooth it later. I'm going to have, actually I'm going to undo all of that and have the river come behind this character for the moment. I'm not going to spend too much effort on this river because in a later video we'll talk through how we can get some much more interesting water behavior. So at the moment I'm just kind of sculpting out a general shape of a river stream. It's more of a stream really um, and not worrying too much about the, the exact shape of this, of this stream. Right, so that kind of wanders meanderingly into the distance where it loses focus and now we don't have to worry about it anymore. Okie dokie. So 
then I'm going to imagine that the scene that I'm creating is going to point from where the camera is now out that way. So this is where I'm going to focus most of my attention. And I think the next thing that I'm going to do is make a path, a slightly raised path, from where we are here, kind of wandering through the central area of where my hills will be. So what I'm going to do is use the Sculpt tool to raise a little bit, oh, that's way too much, so I'll turn that tool strength down, to raise up a tiny little bit of a path. Um, that's probably too high. Lower that down. And use the Flatten tool. Because the Flatten tool means that I can sample this area and then just paint it on from there backwards. And this is just a sense of where my path will lead. I've been kind of arbitrary about it. And it curves around there where there's going to be a hill. Great. So now let's add this first foreground hill. This this guy over here, or the spirit of this guy over here. Um, and I'm going to try and make the hill come right to the edge of the path. So let's start with my sculpt tool. Build up around there. Oh my goodness, that's way too high. It's back at one. Interesting. I'm using a small brush just to get the edges, and I know that it's really rough at the moment, but then I'm going to come in with the smooth tool and smooth out that roughness. It's not perfect, but it'll do. So that's a much shallower hill than in my reference image. I can imagine that that's quite steep and tall. Um, maybe I'll make it twice as high as it currently is. But I think the camera perspective is very different in both of those as well. So I'm not worrying too much about that. I'm just going for broad strokes essence of the image rather than exact truth. And I will extend this hill range out that way a little bit. Definitely going to have to smooth that out. OK. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that for the moment. We might revisit it later. I'm then going to go in and add a second, much bigger hill over here, which I will make a lot more uh, detailed and like bumpy and, and eroded basically. But this hill will be nice and flat, and this one will be all bumpy and messed up. Cool, so let's go back to sculpt. Big brush size. Ugh. Way too. out a little bit. Definitely want to increase the slope on this side. As if this river is kind of carved through it over millennia. 
and I'm going to smooth this out. Okay. Now that we're here, let's try to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's see what happens if I use this erosion tool. Um, because I think the erosion tool will do well at getting this kind of S-shaped pattern. So moving things from the top down to the bottom. Side of this. Yeah, it's kind of getting there. the string. Okay, so I'm getting I'm getting that, but then I'll need to smooth out the top so that it comes back again. Might even want to flatten out the top. Mm, no, that's probably too much. Ah, I did too much. I'll oh, add some of that back in using the sculpt. That doesn't look too bad from this angle, but from this angle, it looks a little bit unnatural. What might help with that, though, is some details. So let's go in with hydro erosion. And I believe that at least some of these divots are made thanks to hydro erosion. So let's hop back into Exactly as I would hope. I wonder if maybe this. Oh, there we go. I've got some. Some variation happening. I think what I might do instead is begin to add some noise. So set the tool strength way down. And let's do both. See if we can add some. I think the noise is too high scale. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's still too high scale. Set it down to 10. Yeah, that's, that's nice and bumpy. I'll just take a little quick dab at this hill to add some thickness to it. Uh, but not too much, and yeah, that seems pretty good. I think the rest of it we can dress with stones and rocks later on. Okay, so then lastly, I will add another big hill in the background over here using my sculpt tool. This time I will make a really big brush, set the strength to one, and just go just click a couple of times. <laughs> That's probably good enough for government work. And then, yeah, I'll, I'll smooth that out a little bit to create more of a S shape. So I think to do that, I'm going to go back to erosion. Okay. 
probably a bit heavy handed there. I just want to get this edge piece that we have. I think see the remnants of my path over there. Which I don't mind too much because that was just as a general guide. Uh, once we have texture painting in later on, we'll go in and properly paint a, a path through. Uh, over here, I'm just smoothing out some of these more jagged edges. A look at how it looks like from the reference point. That's not too bad. Maybe there's too much of a, hmm. Yeah, this area is too empty now. So I might just go into the sculpt tool and raise this whole area up. Oh, nope, way too much. Could be. Very, ah, oh, too much still. Let's see, undo. Way too much. Come on. Oh, this is probably something that I could use the for loop for. Let's just increase that or decrease the four. And just raise that whole area. Okay, I don't love that. Uh, where is it? That bit over there. I'm trying to smooth that out. It's it's kind of messed up in my my contour on the edge there. Uh, so we can go back to sculpt. Move this out a little bit, or rather, just like take a chunk out of this. And then smooth the top. Maybe I'll use flatten in this case, so that the top is kind of flat with a really high fall off, so that um, it's quite a soft application. Just yeah, sample from there and like try and flatten everything out on the top here. Cool. Later on, we'll come in with a smooth tool, but for now. Yes, that's what I'm going for. That. Flat, and then it's a sharp drop, and then it flattens out again. That's very peak district. So finally, we'll just, this, it's a bit jagged over here, so take my smooth tool, smooth it out a little bit. And there we go. Okie dokie. Um, right, the last thing I want to do is then flatten this top as well. I'll use the same application. Okay, let me go into a little bit. Hmm, it's too much. Smooth. All right, great, that works for me. So I've got my three sort of close-up hills, and then I think I'll just use the noise tool to add some hills in the background there, uh, which, yeah, noise, um, I'll choose just add. Again, pretty low tool strength, and the noise scale is also gonna be really high, so something like 250. Let's see what that looks like. Oop. A really, really big brush. So I'm going to manually type in 16,000. And click about a couple of times. Way too much.
all I really want to do is just layer the background a little bit. But you can kind of see some hint of, you know, if I was coming through here on a journey, I can see some hint of in the background, but I'm not too worried about the details. Anymore. Okay. Um, all right, I guess the last thing I might want to do is use a tiny little tool here to smooth out this riverbed. There's the jagged edges. Cool. Now that the hills are in, I think I can come through again with the flatten tool. I pick a random spot that I want to be my path. Uh, how wide is my path? 100 meters? Maybe two, two, not 100 meters, two meters, because I've got the fall off. So now I'll just try to flatten this area out again, as if someone's come through and carved a path. Ooh, that's way too strong over there. Let's increase the smoothing. Well, once again, there's a couple of jaggies, so move that out. Move, 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 move. Obviously, if you're going for a really rough, jagged terrain, then that look might suit you. But in my case, I'm not. I'm going for some peaceful rolling hills. And I think I'll... Cool. So... I think the last, well, I've said the last thing a couple of times, but I think we have the general essence of kind of contours in the foreground. Um, this, this hill over here, just increase that a little bit manually in the sculpt tool. Overdone it. Okay, cool. I think later on I'm going to add some rocks here um, to cover up the the jaggedness. Um, but for now, I think this is a good place for me to start. I don't want to spend too much longer on this video, which is already. 20 minutes, so I will leave it here, and then in the next video we'll be talking about uh, materials, so uh, next time I visit this scene, I will be uh, beginning to paint on those those textures to try to bring some colour into the scene. Okay, before I leave you, I will just um, save this map. So control S will say map. Uh, once you save, sometimes the lighting will be a little bit messed up and you'll have some weird shadows. Don't panic about that. They will go away eventually. Unreal taking its time to process things. And once you save, the little star on the map will go away. And that means that you have saved the map and you can successfully um, close the engine if you want. I do recommend saving often. Uh, there are occasional crashes and you don't want to lose your work if you've been working on a lot of stuff. So every so often just uh, hit Control S to save, save your scene. All right, uh, that's it from me for this video then. I will see you in the next one. And until then, cheers. <laughs>